Ezra de Moye. Ezra de Moye. Education Moye. Okay. Yes, uh, good morning once again. As uh, the minister says, it's a very important day. Uh, accessibility, mobility of directors to make sure teachers and students uh, are in school and both are doing their duties uh, is uh, number one important. So, again, let me thank our national minister, Madam Wood, Honorable, uh, for her hard work. It has been felt across the country, Madam. Uh, you are now really doing what all mothers need to do because education starts with mothers. Uh, so, Minister Dengaja, thank you. Ideas are the one transform the knowledge. Uh, this issue of motorbike was your number one when you came in. Uh, so your work is good and that's why we are behind you we will support you the leadership of the Nature of Shagul I will be behind you and the secretary thank you for coming with the director uh, with the DG to Jongle and witness uh, all what we are doing today uh, so Sudanese as our president keeps saying, let hold our hand, let us stop fighting ourselves. And let feed our mind so that we can change our life and our country to be in that level of competition with the rest of the world or here in East Africa. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the peace that you brought have opened all the classes across the country and that's why we are standing here today we'll be behind you uh, to support you making sure the national activities are going well without distraction so for this uh, student as you can see we are going to declare uh, now that uh, the motorbike are going to be hand over officially and we don't want to see them here in board. Let them go to the counties. <laughs> only for board county, that's what we want to see around. Okay, and not only in board town, <laughs> in Payams. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, in fact, I will have no much to, to say but to just only 
give appreciation to our Honorable Minister Gabriel Dengajak together with the management team of the Ministry of General Education in Tungule State. He's not the first minister to be appointed in our ministry. He's minister number eight. Seen the establishment of uh, education in our country, the first minister was John Antipas. He was with us here. It was from 2006 up to 2007. The second minister was also Martian, followed by Stephen Farr, followed by Michael Chut, followed by Honorable Mithal Wong. Another one was uh, Your Mike, and also Mwilwa was the minister that was replaced uh, by our current minister. So seeing then, we have never seen a physical development being done, though we used to have resources. So this uh, great work done by our minister is a great achievement, and it is actually an uh, appreciation that can go back to our uh, acting governor, who was actually put his trust into our minister in his party and appointed him. So we appreciate our honorable a governor or acting governor for the appointment of Honorable Dengaja. So you could see the fence around is not a simple activity. It costs a lot of money. This purchase of motorcycle here costs a lot of money. The renovation of the houses that are there plus the concrete uh, toilet which has also been uh, done under his time, constructed under his time. Thank you so much, Honorable. And on behalf of the counties, you are all happy. Education community in nine, in nine counties is giving you appreciation. I don't want to say that I'm the best, but I can assure you all that I will try my best. When I came here, I found this place as a grazing ground for the cattle, goats, pigs, and many unwanted uh, animals. And vehicles are also passing this crossing here. And when I pay a visit to this school, I felt shocked and I, I was not happy at all. And I went back to the ministry and I, and I asked, what do we have? And what we have is what culminated to the fence that you see. There. Because security of our children, particularly the girl child, is a priority number one. This area was all full of chops around it. And to the extent alcohol was being sold at that corner. And we can imagine a girl child coming to this school in that environment. She can be exposed to a couple of risks. And that is why we have this fence constructed, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, the second was the motorbikes for the county directors. And as I said, this is just the beginning of a bigger thing. Because if the director has the mobility, the county level, the inspector at the same time needs to have mobility at the payam levels. And then we go down to the teacher in the classroom. If we can, I will try my best to have at least a, a teacher must have a, a, a bicycle for him to go down. <laughs> at least a bicycle per a teacher. So that in the morning you are able to go back to your and come very early in the school and deliver your lessons and then go back to your home in time. This is a dream that we will all work for. It's not only me to achieve, but I'm confident because I have a very experienced, very committed, and indeed a very strong lady for this country, Honorable Wudenga Chil, who have decided to say 
children of South Sudan must be educated. And that kind of commitment required our support, all of us in the States. It's not my first time to work with her. I work with her in the humanitarian. And in a very short time that she has been the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, wonders were seen. So it is not a surprise for me today to see the current achievement that we are making in the education family. So long as you continue to be the minister, you will see more wonders in the education sector. And above all, our president, Salva Kiir, is committed to this process. Our indicators in education are quite low in South Sudan. And they are the lowest in the region. And there is no country that can prosper without good education, without educated people. We cannot build any country using foreigners. Because in 2006, people tried to hire foreign teachers, but it was not sustainable. But today, every classroom has a teacher who originate from these states. We don't have a foreign teacher as we speak. So this is a step in the right direction. I believe in few years to come, we will have all our teachers in secondary school having a degree, and even in the primary school. <laughs> Honorable Awood, who is represented here by Under Secretary, is committed to increase the earning of every teacher in the classroom. <laughs> From time to time, when she calls us to Juba, she takes like three hours talking alone. You can see the pressure that she has put in, in the whole process. And whatever she will say is to make sure our children are educated. Last, she will say our children must be educated. There are two million out of school children. And those children need to come back to the classroom and be taught. And that is what will change our indicators in the near future. Minister, Your Excellency, um, Acting Governor, Honorable Ministers, uh, the DGs that are here, the teachers that are here, the county education directors and coordinators, and of course our students uh, that are represented by these schools. I'm very happy to be here. But first, I want to convey the message, the greetings from our Minister, Honorable Oudenga Chuil, to all of you especially the students and the teachers. She greets you warmly and she would wish to be here with you. And we hope she will come, she will come one day and, and in person and, and meet you. So uh, I'm very happy to be here for a number of reasons. One, I was a student in this school. In 1977, I was a first year student in Congo Intermediate. There were two intermediate schools in Bor. There was Bor, Bor Intermediate, and Congo Intermediate. I was a student here, which later became Malay. This is a very important message, especially for, this, for the children. The message is this. If you work hard, if you work hard in your school, if you listen to your teachers, if you listen to your parents, you can become anything. Because it was the education that I got here. And some of my teachers that I got here in 1977, I will never forget them. So you need to listen to your teachers. Jongle State has some of the most uh, highly performing schools in the country. And this is a congratulation message to your teachers. Your teachers are working hard because your schools are coming up um, in the performance in the national examinations, primary and secondary. Although most of these schools are private schools, are not the state schools. So what we want to do 
is that the message of the minister is some of these schools, some of our state schools must penetrate. They must get in there to compete with the private schools. We are not against private schools. Private schools are educating our children. They give them quality education. But also, we must make sure some of our state schools, like this school, should come up in and compete with some of these private schools. Because private schools are very expensive, and our parents, our families, have limited resources. So we want most of our children to be educated in government schools, not in private schools. And because of that, the Honorable Minister has prioritized one important thing in the reform. Whatever reform you're talking about, you have to put the teacher in the center of that reform. The teacher must be in the center of that reform. Because without the teacher, without a good teacher, you cannot, you cannot deliver quality education. You cannot deliver quality education because we need quality education. We need a teacher that can inspire you. That can inspire you. When you go home, you pursue your studies. You want to become a, a, an engineer. You want to become a pilot. You want to become a doctor. This is a teacher who will make you to do that. So if you don't have a quality teacher in your school, I mean, a, a teacher that can inspire you to give you quality education, you will not be able to achieve that. So we want our teachers to be well paid. Our teachers must be well paid because they also have families. So we have increased the salary of the teacher and as you heard from the Honorable Minister, they are going to increase it more. They are going to increase it more because we want them to teach in our schools. And this is why this project is important. This is important. Yongle is one of the largest states. I think it's the largest state geographically in terms of area in South Sudan. It has vast lands. Like now, it's okay, I can come to Bor using this road. In fact, you can live in Juba and work in Bor, or you can live in Bor and work in Juba because you have the road. But this is the end of the world. You cannot access other counties. It's very difficult. So we need these this people these directors of education in the counties to be empowered. They have to inspect schools. And this mobility is going to help them to inspect the schools. Because we must make sure teachers are teaching. Education is compulsory in South Sudan and it is free. Now, as you heard from the minister, we have over 2 million children out of school. We want these kids to be enrolled in the school. And this is the work of the education directors, the county education officers. They have to help us in doing that. Welcome.
Certificate of Appreciation. This is an instruction, John Blaise State Honorable, again, in recognition of the continuing dedicating and efforts toward education development in South Sudan. Being a jack, yes. <laughs> So let me appreciate the work that has been done by the National Ministry of supporting the state ministries on everything, resources and discipline, timeline and values that are put into the teachers. As you said under secretary, any school without equipped teacher is not a school yet. Because if we don't put anything in their mind, uh, they cannot succeed. Uh, what I really want to say as a government of Jonglei State, uh, we are committed to support the education system. Number one is security. If security is there, the children will go to school. Number two, they must have food. And this, we are engaging with parents and also our partners, like World Food Program and other international NGO or national NGO that are partners of education, so that there is school feeding program in place. That can support the student. Also, a campaign of girl education has to be a must, as one of the speakers have talked about it. In other areas, when girls reach 13 or 14, boom, they think they are grown up, but they're still kids. They have to reach up to 18, and for them to reach up to 18 years old, they should be protected by the system. The government, the parent, and all the education system have to be behind girl education so that they can succeed. Uh, also, we need female teachers to be in classroom too. In this world, people have to see themselves. They must be a pioneer, they must be an example. And when we have female teachers from nursery school, elementary school, yeah, and then until junior high. In other places, if you go, most of teachers from nursery school and elementary school are female because they are still in that level of nurturing. What the mom do when they hit 11 or 12 or 13 is when the dad, hey, do you know what your daughter is doing? You talk to your son. But from when they are turned down, they still, only the disciplined person or person talk to them is the mom. So we need to support the female uh, teachers to be given a good training because some of them are already read uh, from four. If they can be trained one year, two years, they can manage to teach the nursery school and elementary school. By doing so, we are building the layers of knowledge and foundation in our students. And this is a, 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 this is the responsibility of all. Uh, we have to build something that we are sure, not to guess it. And uh, for Jongulei, Northern Jongulei, uh, Honorable Under Secretary, you can pass it to Honorable Minister, Madam Awun Denga Chil. 2013 has affected learning in Northern Jongulei. COVID-19 floods. 
There is a generation there that have never seen the classroom. And it's our concern. We all really to do our work as leaders. When I came as a deputy governor, I went all to our nine counties. Regardless of difficulties of reaching there, to acquaint myself with the real situation the people are in. So when I'm talking here, I'm talking what I know. So, Madam Wood, we trust you, uh, we love you, and we know you love your children and you value the education. You will ask our president to keep giving you time and we ask God to keep you also healthy so that you can do more to us. Also, I really want to thank the President of the Republic, President Kir Mayadid, for his faith, trust in God, and for his dedication of the leadership of this country. From anything since the liberation to this time, that he is making sure the country is peaceful. He formed the government that have five vice president. So the peace can come every corner of this country so our children go to school. Mr. President, thank you. That's why you see this student here. Uh, before, when we were fighting ourselves with this senseless war, as we all call it, since 2013 and 2016, our students were not in a classroom. Our students were crying, bleeding, and dying. But now they are in a classroom. All the leadership in the country, let us stick with peace so that we are able to solve our own problem, stay in our country, bringing back our refugee around us in other countries, and call a good election where leaders who promise the citizen that elected us and we do, can do. So our president, we have trust in you. Keep eye in the country leadership. Keep supervising us. And God will give you healthy. And you will keep leading us. And education in this country will keep going on. We who have a chance to be in a seat, we are going to do everything to add value in your leadership. Even these students know you, Mr. President. When you came here, they were very happy. You said road will reduce the problem of some Sudanese. Things like education, food, security, medicine, uh, all you name it. When there is road, everything is easy. If there was no road, we will be still now bored. Uh, town will be like far away, six hours travel to Juba or traveling here. Things were not coming. But now it's only two hours. Or for some who have a gut, they may say they come one hour and a half. <laughs> that we don't advise that one. Let it be two hours. So, Mr. President, thank you for the road opening. This road will bring more goodies to the northern Dongle, particularly in Low area and in Pangak area and PG. When that road go to Akobo, go to, to up to Nyirol, go up to Pangak, all this estate we can go uh, easily and supervise the work there.